Well, the election's coming up. Tonight, the polls are showing a Democratic bounce. Did the Republicans peak too early? Uh, we'll get election forecasts from America's talking Christopher Matthews. Now, in case you've been watching AT and Depth, you've been watching Christopher Matthews. Later in the show, uh, the extraordinary Broadway revival Showboat cast members John McMartin and Greta Boston will tell us all about this remarkable production. So stay with us on Straightforward. <laughs> My next guest, I'm sucking on something because I've had a little throat problem, so I just, uh, I got a little piece of candy from the crew here. My next guests are currently starring in a Broadway musical. The critics are calling a masterpiece. Harold Prince, new revival of the historical showboat, first presented in 1927. It's back on Broadway. I'm pleased to have with me cast members, Greta Boston and John McMartin. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. I, uh, first time I ever saw a showboat was in summer theater for John Kennelly in Ohio in 1920. 58, and Alan Jones uh, sang the lead. You don't even know Alan Jones. Jack Jones is now older than me, and he's his son. And, and <laughs> Do you remember Alan Jones? Yeah, yeah. Dave? And uh, he did that. And I thought, what a great show, but they'll never put it back on Broadway because it has such a large cast, it, it would not be economically possible. Now, this is still back in the 60s and 70s when they started with hair and some of the smaller mm -hmm. cast shows, and I thought, you know, economics of Broadway had, had, had been so bad that you couldn't get that larger cast. How many people in the cast of this show? Either 71. 71. 71. Yes. Uh, yes. Wow. Remarkable. You think most shows like this would be underwritten by the government? Yes. You, you would think so. <laughs> <laughs> most shows like this have a budget about the size of the government. Yeah. Uh, how much money do you have to make a week to, to do it, do you know? Have any idea? I, have no idea? I don't know, but I understand it's, it's breaking all the records every week. So. Now, you, you play uh, Captain Andy, yeah. and you play Queenie. Right. This was first presented in 1927, and it has, there are racial overtones, or racial themes here. Uh, oh, what's her name? I can't remember the cat, the, the woman who's... Uh, Edna Ferber. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Wrote about this. Was it seen as racial at that time, or or is it... I heard you had a problem with that in, t in, in Toronto. We did, that... have a, we did have a problem what in Toronto. Um, basically, people who had not seen a Hal Prince production of Showboat mm -hmm. were uh, up in arms about uh, some of the racial slurs that were probably used in the show and, and probably in the book. The N-word? The N-word. Now, they use the, is, they use the N-word yes, in one, the show, am yes, I correct? Yes, one person does use the N-word in the show. Is it shocking? To, it's directed at me. It is. It is shocking. They call you. Of course. It's the still shocking. Right. It is a shocking word. And that, and is that's it necessary in today's us. world? Is it necessary for this show to use that word? We're doing a period show, yeah. and I think it is necessary to establish a period in our history. How do you feel when you hear it? Shocked. Every night. Yeah. I don't get used to it. Yeah. No. It must be tough in a way. I mean. You were in real estate before this, right? What were you doing before you got this job? I know you are so happy doing, to be in this yes, job. Yes, I am. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing uh, conversion plans. I was taking residential property, rental properties, and converting mm -hmm. them to co-ops and condos. Really? Yes. And and then you just went out and got in showboat? or how? No, I was always doing You were out always. working and working and working. You got this. Yes, that was my day gig. Yeah. And now I, is your family happy? You're actually going to make oh, a living yeah. in show business? Oh, yeah. They've been telling you for years, don't give up that other job, right? Well, no, not really. Really? I, that's the one thing that I have adored about my family. They never questioned any move that I made. That's great. So, it's wonderful. That's terrific. But they are happy. They are happy. Yes. What about songs you sing in the show? Mm -hmm. Were they original songs? I, I don't remember <clears throat> Queenie's songs in the, in the summer. Misery Coming Around is one of the songs that Hal has restored in this production. And um, it was never done in any production before. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's wonderful. I get to showcase what I do, and I have a wonderful ensemble behind me. What's your secret ambition? We've got 15 seconds after the Secret show. ambition. Secret ambition. To finish Showboat, and right. then maybe open in a major operatic house. Okay, place. great. We'll be right back with John McMartin <laughs> and Greta Boston. Stay with us. Let us in. Let us go home. 
Scrath of Boston from Showboat. Big hit on Broadway. Where'd you get those pipes? <laughs> no? My mommy. Mama? Did she <laughs> yeah. sing like that? She is a singer. Did you hang around the real estate office doing that? Going, singing like that when you were working? No, Never did, huh? Strictly. Real quiet, business. huh? Yes. Uh, John, you grew up in the Midwest. Yeah. How the hell did you end up on Broadway? I mean, that's tough for a kid from Indiana who grew up in Minnesota. It is, yes. Uh, well, I always wanted to be an actor, right? but uh, where I grew up, they, they didn't have live theater. I didn't even know what. I was in a play before I ever saw it. So. Is that right? Yes. It, uh, I, I thought everything was the movies. You know, every kid, I think, wants to grow up to be an actor, and, and, and very few do it. What's the difference between a guy who actually does it? Is it talent, or is it just guts, or... Uh, well, are you afraid you'd have to get a real job? And I, I always thought. <laughs> you know, I was listening. The real estate sounds wonderful. I, I, I don't know how to do anything else. And so I, I, I took any acting job I could get. I still do. You know, do they? Do yeah. they type you at all? No, it, it, uh, it's difficult because I've done so many varied roles. But but it seems like you're typed from the last show you were in. So. Uh, for instance, uh, when doing Captain Andy, people say, well, I never knew you could uh, do that. They always thought of me as a leading man or playing lawyers and senators or and things quiet, like that. Yeah, uh, yeah you kind of look like one of those guilty senators to me. Yeah. You, know oh, I mean? oh, you ever play those oh, roles? Many of them. Yes. Yes, uh, and doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, and Citizen Cohen, I, I, I pulled the plug on him. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, many, many crooked lawyers. Yeah. Is there... <laughs> What is it about your look, John? Do you ever wonder why they cast you as a crooked look? I, I don't know that. I, you uh, actually have an angelic look. Maybe that's why it's a switch. Somebody said I have yes. one crazy eye. And actually, a, you got you, two you, crazy you, eyes, you. actually, John. You know, <laughs> as I'm sitting here looking at them. They... <laughs> well, uh, stuck with them. That's why I don't like to do films that much. Uh, the, you don't, really? No, because in the theater, I don't... Uh, every, everything that's coming that you're doing, you think, oh, this is truthful, this is honest. But when I, when I see uh, something I've done in a movie or a television, I think, I, I don't like the way I walk, talk, look, act. Have you done this? Have you done series where you have to go in quickly and do a part in a series or something? Uh, I can't. Well, you know, when you do a film, it always feels like you, you, you're doing it for that moment. The mm -hmm. lines are very difficult, even though you've been going over them, over them. And uh, they, they change the lights and everything, and the actor is the last one to get a retake or something. Yeah. Seventy-one people in this cast that you're in now, what's it like backstage? You're, we're probably looking at 30 on stage at any given moment, or 40 or something. I mean, even in the big chorus numbers, and when the yeah. cotton blossoms moon, you're all out there doing this thing. What's going on backstage when there are only three people on stage? Well, it's an absolute madness, especially when they're changing into various costumes, because it's... Uh, it's various states of nudity in the wings and, and, <laughs> and climbing over the sets. It's sort of worth just getting in the chorus just to be back there. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, we right? have the, they have the montage, montage one and montage two, where Florence Klotz, the, the uh, designer, costume designer, wonderful, wonderful, beautiful costumes. But we have these scenes where people are maybe changing three or four times in the wings. And you're getting out of the way. Well, I'm not really on stage. We're not on stage during that time. You're reading a letter during one of those things. But it's maddening. Mm -hmm. And you've got crew, wonderful crew. Yeah. And they're all backstage. So you could get seriously hurt. You could get you injured know back there. Doing. I mean, it's a real factory yes, backstage. It is. People don't. Oh, the opening night, Hal brought on stage the entire crew, the orchestra, right. the, the people that do, uh, do the costumes. It was over 200 people. Mm -hmm. Why is Hal Prince so good at what he does? Why has he had so many hits? What's he, his secret? He knows what to do with that box. He's, uh, he has a, a, an eye. He's an amazing fellow. I, I've, this is my fifth Broadway show with him. Is that right? And they were, they were all different. Uh, Congreve's uh, uh, Love for Love, Restoration Comedy, Eugene O'Neill, Duramont, The Visit, Follies. Actually, there were 50, 50 people in that company. I think uh, even if they sold out, they only broke even. Who had the lead in that show? It Follies. was uh, Alexa Smith, with Dorothy Collins, Gene Nelson, Nevada Carlo. Right. Uh, Fifi Dorsey, uh, Ethel Chute, Stank Broadway Baby. Right. Came out of that. What uh, what's next for you after show about it? What do you have long term? Is he signing you for long term contracts? And then you're in there and you got to do this every night, right? 
Oh, yes. You, but it's, so it's wonderful because it's, it's, you're waiting in the wings to go out and you hear the overture start and you think, oh, these people don't know what they're about to see. Mm -hmm. I know, fantastic yeah. music. I mean, yeah. you can't believe they actually uh, wrote that kind of music, so many good songs in one show. I mean, that's, today, if you watch a, a new show, if you get one good song, you're so happy, you go out, otherwise you have to go out, as they say, humming the set. I mean, yes. you can't. Mm -hmm. But in that show, there are so many great songs. She sings. There's Can't so many that you, you leave with uh, in your mind. Bill, Can't Help Loving That Man of Mine. Of course, Old Man River. Right. And Elaine um, honors us with the lullaby. It's, it's really wonderful. So much music. Are, are either of you worried that American theater is dying? They say that it's hard to raise money. There are no tax breaks for the theater anymore. There are a lot of actors out of work. I mean, uh, are you worried? Or do, is, there, is there plenty of work for a talented actor? I think certainly without uh, companies like Live Entertainment, who are entrepreneurs willing to put their money on the line, big musicals like this could be in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. I really do believe that. You feel the same way? Yes, and uh, well, Neil Simon's going off Broadway yes. now. Mm -hmm. At least he says he is. Uh, and that'll last about a week. He yes. sees the box office receipts, and, and he'll be back. On Broadway in about 15 seconds. Uh, but still, is there's not very many straight plays coming out uh, this season, and, and that's money. I How about the level of writing? I went to a movie uh, over the weekend, Pulp Fiction, which was terrible, a disaster, because they only had three words in the whole film. Like, I could have written that film. I mean, I know three <laughs> words, was, and I happen to know the three they used. Two of them were vulgar. So, I mean, it's not tough writing. You know, I mean, I could have written that film. I wouldn't want to have written that film. But, I mean, is writing deteriorating? Or are you feeling, do you see a lot of good scripts in your business? Uh, well, I think most of the writers are going to Hollywood and writing... Writing the three-word scripts where right. they make a lot of dough. I don't know where the play, maybe off-Broadway, there's, there's some good new writers. Right. Uh, okay, we're going to take another break. We'll be back with Showboat Stars, John McMartin, Greta Boston. Stay with us. If you have a uh, question for him, you can give us a call at 1-800-988-TALK. Otherwise, I'll ask the questions. See you in a minute. That's what I was doing. Uh, uh, oh, you thought you were doing something else? Yes, yes, I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> well, hell, Prince loved it. I mean, <laughs> well, I just uh, you obviously have no taste. Uh, <laughs> this guy's pretty good out there. Well, thank tell you. me about your daughters coming to see you. Oh, it was, a, it was a great thrill for me. Kathleen and Susan are my daughters, and they when Kathleen came from California with her husband, and uh, and my other daughter Susan, who's in New York, York now, but she was living in California, can't. And uh, they've seen me in plays before, but, but this was a special occasion. And uh, it was a tremendous opening, and knowing they were out there. And, and, and the, the play is so much about family, anyway. Yeah. And uh, the relationship that Captain Annie has with his daughter is, right. is very warm. And, and, and I have a few lines in there that, that hit home. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when my kids came up to the dressing room with their tears in their eyes, I just love that. Mm -hmm. We're talking with two of the stars from uh, from Showboat. Let me read a couple of these numbers. We were talking about what it's like backstage. 21 dressers, 6 wig masters, 500 costumes, 300 pairs of shoes. Boy, if you lost a shoe, it'd be good night. I mean, you wouldn't <laughs> you'd have to hunt through 300 shoes. I mean, that'd be tough back there. 402 hats, caps, cams, 125,000 hours of wardrobe people worked on building costumes. Eight computers are needed to operate the scenery, sound, and lighting equipment. Only one computer we can bomb the Soviet Union. We, you know, you got to have eight to eight run this show. You know, we could take out the entire, uh, well, we can't anymore because we're friendly with them. But, I mean, when we used to worry about the Soviet Union, we could do it with one computer. <laughs> oh, this is unbelievable. Did you ever think you would achieve this, or did you ever worry that, boy, I'm going to be stuck doing this stuff in the old real estate office here? You know, I, I never doubted that I was going to do my music. I knew that if I persevered and kept going to voice lessons and coachings and, audition somewhere eventually I'd, I'd do it but never never broadway never broadway never huh? broadway 
Did you ever get discouraged? Did you ever just say, that's it, I give up, I'm not going to make it? No. Did you get turned down on auditions? No. Every, everything that I auditioned for, I got. It was just the fear of going out there and auditioning that just... Do you still have any stage fright, or are you over it? No, I'm over it. Are you? I don't like auditions. No. <laughs> well, does? that's tough for a client. You know, that it, that is really true. Some of the finest actors really dread auditions because they have to do things that they can't do in an artificial setting Absolutely. and yet they're That's terrific it. when they get the part. Somebody said George C. Scott was, you know, back in the days when he was auditioning, just couldn't do it well. I don't know if that's true, but they said he just couldn't mm -hmm. do it. I had a friend that's, that was just the opposite. He, he said, I don't want to do the run of the play. He said, I just want to do the auditions and the, <laughs> and the actors benefit. <laughs> That would be terrible. <laughs> guy oh, does a great audition. Oh. We have time for a quick phone call from Tom from New Jersey. I think it's Tom. Hello. Hi. Question? I was wondering if you, what Greta felt about uh, playing a slave on, on Showboat, if it bothered her or... Seeing, I'm sorry. Repeat that. I was wondering how Greta felt about playing a slave in Showboat, if it bothered her playing at all. a slave. I'm not a slave. Hey, that answers <laughs> your question. She hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we have about 30 seconds left. I want to plug this. Tell them what theater. This is the Gershwin Theater. Gershwin Theater. And uh, where can they get tickets? Do you have a guest ticket master or wherever ticket you go to get it? Box office. Down? Box office. Box office, whatever. Mm -hmm. Go and see it. It is a great show. Everybody who is an American should see Showboat. I'll tell you something. It's about us. It's about our history. It's a wonderful, wonderful evening of theater. Thank you both for being with me. Thank you. Okay. And we'll see you again tomorrow night.